What's going on YouTube? In this tutorial, um, originally I was going to talk about Splice and Slice, but I ended up having so much stuff for Splice that that's all we're going to talk about. But I think this lesson is really interesting, so let's get started on it. So we're starting off with uh, our variable s that's set to an array of nine elements, and we're writing it out. That's really easy for you guys, so let's look at the next part. So the next thing we're doing is we're creating a new variable a, and a is set to, uh, we have s here, and we're running the splice method on this array, and we're giving it one parameter, and the parameter is a value of six. So what happens when we, we use splice, but we only give it one parameter like this? What it's gonna do is it's gonna go to the index number six of the array, which is the seventh position of the array, and let's find that really quick. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to this 7 and what it's going to do is it's going to uh, remove 7 and everything to the end of the array. Okay, so let's see what happens here. And it's also going to return a value. And we're going to store that value in A. So let's take a look at this. So we can see that um, it went to 7 and it deleted this. Well, remove this and everything to the end of the array. So S is now like this, and A is set to 7, 8, 9. So um, again, this method does two things. It's going to modify the initial array, and it's going to return whatever it took out. Okay, let's look at the next thing. So here, um, A is, we're, we're setting it to new thing now, we're running the splice method on s again and this time we're giving it two parameters so what are these two parameters well the first one is where to start and the second parameter shows how many elements to remove okay so let, let's see what this does to it so what happened so before our s is like this and what did we do we went to Two, okay we went to the second position in this which is the three and we told it that we want to remove two elements so go to three and then remove two elements which is three and four okay and you can see here that it took those out and then we returned it so now a is equal to three and four the ones that we took out okay hope that's pretty straightforward let's do a little more all right so here um, very similar to the last one, go to the number one uh, position in the array, which is the second position. Remember, array start at zero, so zero, one. Okay, go to the second spot in the array and remove one element. So we can see that S is like this now, so go to this two and remove one element. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can see it removed the two and now that 2 was returned to A. Now A is 2. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next thing. So here I'm, uh, we're using splice on S, but we're providing more parameters here. So what we're doing here is, let me explain these parameters to you. It's saying, go to position 1 in the array, which is the second position, okay? Go to position 1, remove nothing but insert these two values and let's see what happens there okay so we can see that first of all okay we have to look at this s here so it went to this one here this is position one and we said remove nothing okay so we remove nothing and then insert this v and w so it's going to go here and where is it going to insert? It's going to insert just before it. Okay, just before it. So that's why we get this output here. 1 VW56. Okay, and remember, we told it to remove nothing, so now A is nothing. Now A is an empty array. Okay, there's nothing there. Uh, let's look at another one. Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier. Um, so what we're doing here is we're running the splice method on S. We're going to the first position. We're removing two elements. 
and then we're inserting an array and then we're inserting a regular string here which is Z okay um, we're writing that out we're writing out what a is and then we're, we're gonna check s's length because I'm gonna show you there's something tricky about this one and let's find out what that is okay so it says s is now this all right and we can see how many elements here one two three four five six okay a is VW okay this isn't surprising because we went one we went to here and we said remove two elements which is the V and the W so A is set to V and W okay that's not surprising and then we're checking the length and the length is it says it's five okay so this S array is five now but here it looks like there's six elements but actually there's not six elements in the array there's five so this is accurate here Okay, so what's happened is this X and Y is an array within an array. But what happens is when we just output it with document.write, it's going to flatten this array. So this is not, um, this could fool a lot of people because it's flattened. So what we can do to investigate into that a little further is we can run a for loop. And we can loop through all of the elements of array to see them in a much more clear fashion than just document.write on the array which flatten these two guys where they're actually an array okay so let's take a look at what that does okay so now you can see we've looked at this before if you don't understand this look at one of my previous videos where we already talked about this so we can see what's happening here is we're looping through each element of the array the first element is a one the second element is an array of x and y. Uh, yeah, the third element is z, five, six. So we can say one, two, three, four, five. S not like this five. So this was telling us the truth. Okay, and this is what the array looks like now. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is well, here's just some more confirmation. I'm writing out and so the tricky one was this uh, was this x y, which is s and position one. So s sub zero is this, s sub one is this. Okay, and we're just checking the type of it. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and it's telling us it's an object. Okay, remember arrays are a kind of object in JavaScript, and so we know it's an object here. This is also code that we looked at before in a previous tutorial where we know it's an object now, so we're just checking if it's an, an instance of the array object. If it is, it's going to tell us it's an array. If it's not, it's going to tell us it's not an array. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and it tells us that S sub 1 is an array. Okay, we know it's an object. It's an instance of array. Okay. Now, one thing is when I when I first looked at this syntax here, okay, I thought this was a little bit tricky because I just I didn't understand how these were all separated. But basically, this instance of is it's running a function on this array to see if it's true or not. So remember, if what's in these parentheses is true, we're writing this out. So actually, we can write this out in another way if this makes more sense to you. We can remove this white space we can leave it so if s sub 1 instance of and this time I just put um, I put this in parentheses here so it looks it shows you instance of is like a function and you'll see that this is just fine too and that's gonna give us the exact same output okay but the usual way of writing it is like this one so I think I'm just gonna delete this Okay, so when we're checking, running the instance of, you can just write it just like that. Okay, in this last thing, uh, this is a function that, that I just wrote out to try to um, show what we can do with splice. All right, let's take a look at it. So basically, what this function is doing, this function, I called it divider and it's taking two arguments, it's taking a numerator and a denominator 
and we want to return the quotient, okay? But in this function, there's a rule, which is I'm not allowed to use the divide operator in JavaScript. So I have to find another way to do division, but not with the maths divide operator, okay? Which looks like this, by the way. So we're not going to use that to do division. So for example, if the numerator is 10 and the denominator is 3, so 10 over 3, the output they, that we want is 3 and 1 over 3, okay? In the second example, if the numerator is 9 and the denominator is 3, well then we're not going to get a fraction, we're going to get a whole number, and we just want it to return a 3, okay, which is the quotient. Okay, here, so we have numer array, and that's set to a new array, and how many elements are we putting in the array? We're putting numer amount of elements in the array. So basically in a nutshell what this function is doing is um, so for example if we want to do 10 over 3 we're going to make a new array we're going to give it 10 elements okay and we're going to set whole numbers we're going to set that to 0 and what we're going to do is this array has 10 elements of it and we're going to rip away at it we're going to we're going to take chunks out of it chunks of the denominator until this becomes a certain value, until this array become, has zero elements in it, or until this array has less than the denominator amount of elements in it. Okay, and that will be more clear uh, once we look at the rest of this function. Okay, so um, here we're, we're just writing out the length. Um, okay, and now let's get into our loop. So. Um, Bear with me, I'll try to explain this um, as best I can. So basically we're saying, okay, while this numer array exists, okay, you'll notice I have nothing else in these parentheses. That means while this exists, okay, if this if this variable exists, if this array exists, then we're gonna run all the stuff under it. If it doesn't exist, then we're not gonna run this and we're just gonna jump out of the while loop, okay? So you might be asking, well, why wouldn't this numer array exist? Okay, the reason it won't exist is because I'm gonna make it not exist if it uh, reaches some conditions that, that, that I want. So basically, this is gonna keep running unless we get to this else if statement where I got what I wanted, then I'm setting it to false because I already got all the stuff I wanted now I'm setting it to false and also in this one I'm setting it to false so what happens is if I set this numerator to false then it's not an array anymore then it's a boolean value and the boolean value is false and if for example if I just put false in here then this while loop is then it's not going to run this while loop because this is false. So that's why I set it to false later on in this. Let's just put that back. All right. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. So in the beginning, okay. For example, if I'm providing these ones, ten and three. In the first one, it's asking, okay, is the length of the array greater than the denominator? Okay. So we're going to have ten and three right now. Is 10 greater than 3? Yes, it is. Then we're going to run the splice method on it, giving it 0 and 3. Okay, That means we're going to splice from the very beginning of the array, and we're going to remove three elements. So you can see how I'm, how I'm ripping away at the array in chunks. I'm going to the start of the array, and I'm taking 3 off the front. Start of the array, taking 3 off the front. And that's how um, I remove... Uh, I remove parts from the array with each iteration of this loop okay and if you don't understand some of this I encourage you to just stop the video here and take a look at this while loop okay so um, let's just uh, okay let's talk a little bit more let's go to this else if so what happens so let's say we're doing 10 over 3 so is 10 greater than 3 yes it is we're running this then we're going to take away three elements from the array. Is seven greater than three? Yes, it is. We're going to do this stuff. And then it's going to be four. Okay, is four greater than three? Yes. 
then we're going to do this stuff. Then we're going to take 3 away again, and then it's going to say, okay, is 1 greater than 3? No, it's not. Okay, and then it's going to come down here, and it's going to say, else if. Well, is 1 equal to 3? No, it's not. And then we're going to come down here and do the else statement. Okay, so that's for if we're, we're going to have something like 10 over 3, where we're not going to, you know, return a whole number. We're going to have... Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, a remainder. Then when it's a remainder, we're going to do this if statement a certain amount of times, and then we're going to jump down to the else, okay? <clears throat> but if it's something like 9 and 3 here, okay, let's see what happens with 9 and 3, okay? Okay, is 9 greater than 3? Yes, it is. Remove it by 3. Is 6 greater than 3? Yes, it is. Finally, is 3 greater than 3? No, it isn't. Is 3 equal to 3? Yes, it is. So if we get that sort of situation where the denominator is equal to um, the length of the array, then we know we're going to return uh, a whole number. And then we're going to, okay, 3 is equal to 3. And then we're going to run this stuff right here. And at the end of this, it's setting it to false. So that's the last time this is going to run because once we're done this final stuff, it's getting set to false. False is getting it put in here. While false, that doesn't work. And then it's jumping out. Okay? So just take a look at that code and uh, let's see let's see how it looks here. Okay. Alright, oops, I forgot to do one thing. We forgot to run the function. Okay, so <clears throat> Let's start by giving this divider function 9 and 3. Okay, and let's see what that does. Okay, so, uh, all right. Numeral length is set to 9. If conditional shows whole is 1, whole is now 1, and length is 6, and then we did it again, whole numbers is now 2, and the array length is 3, and then we jump down to the else if statement, this one, and the else if conditional shows the length is now 0, and then we did this final thing, 9 over 3 is equal to 3, all right, which was this stuff right here. Okay, oops, um, yeah, this one here, okay, so 9 over 3 is equal to 3. And we can put other stuff in here. We could put a 12, and we're going to get 4. Okay. So this just kind of shows you um, how we could use splice just to remove things of an array and actually do division with it. Um, let's do it with our 10 and 3 that we were talking about before. All right, so... Here we can see that we did that if statement three times, and then it was 10 over 3, so it did 9 greater than 3, or sorry, 10 greater than 3, 7 greater than 3, 4 greater than 3, and then we, we brought it down to 1. one greater, is 1 greater than 3? No, it's not. Is 1 equal to 3? No, it's not. That's why we went down to this else, so you can see three ifs, and then an else statement. Okay, and we still, we, still, we still get the right answer. 10 over 3 is equal to 3 and a third. And we could do any sort of thing like that. We could do, we could just do a 4. Okay, 4 over 3. 4 over 3 is equal to 1 and a third. Okay, so here's that code one more time. Um, I don't know if I did a very good job explaining this, but Hopefully you can just look at the code and you can understand um, how Splice worked in this situation. Okay, thanks a lot for listening.